Welcome to our tutorial on completing appointments in Gazelle. It should be easy for you to update your client records and schedule follow-up reminders after an appointment. We've created a process for completing appointments to help with this. There are two main reasons for needing to mark appointments as complete. The first is to tell Gazelle that the tuning is complete so that we can schedule the next tuning reminders for six months or a year from today. The second reason is to combine a bunch of common actions into one place. Uh, this might be some things that you want to do at the end of an appointment at, before you pull out of their driveway or um, possibly actions you might want to do at the end of each day. Um, but in general, there are things that you want to do for this client before you finish their appointment and uh, so you don't have to think about them again until their next appointment. So I'm going to walk you through a demo of how this works on the website. Um, but I also want to make sure you understand this also works on the mobile app as well. Uh, you can everything I'm going to demo here. You can also do from the from our mobile app. So here I've logged into the Gazelle dashboard. Up here at the top, we can see a couple of appointments that need to be marked as complete. These are appointments that I did yesterday that I have not yet marked them as complete. Um, but if I'm going throughout the, through today, um, appointments that are in the past will also show up here. So we usually recommend doing this each day. Um, I'm just going to take this first one here for Edgar and click on Mark as Complete. Now it pulls up his record here, and this is this is what we mean by the, the uh, completion workflow screen. There's a bunch of actions here that you might want to do. So the first, the first part up here deals with that first reason for completing appointments. This tells Gazelle the result of this appointment. So was it uh, marked as was the appointment completed successfully? That's the common action. So that one's selected by default. Or did they need to reschedule? Were they a no show? Did they cancel? All these other actions um, might be possible as well. All these other results might be possible as well. This first one here, when we mark it as complete, is the only one that will um, that will mark this piano as having been tuned on this date and then schedule the future reminders. All these other ones will can will mark the piano as not having been tuned and they'll still get reminders for the uh, for right now saying that they still need to do the, the, that they need to have uh, the piano serviced. So the most common action is to just mark it as complete. So I'm going to do that for this one. Um, next, uh, the other common action that you might want to do is uh, send some uh, scheduled messages to them. So, for example, uh, one thing that we often recommend is if you had a pleasant experience with this customer and you think that they might give you a positive review, um, send them an email asking them for a review. So right here, we can uh, click on add a message. And I have a template set up here for, um, for requesting online review. Um, but you could also create just a, an email that you write from hand. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use our template. And so now it's going to send this message immediately. As soon as I save this, it's going to send this message out. All right, um, but let's say we also installed a damp chaser. And uh, tomorrow we want to remind them, you know, check the humidity levels or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do. You can also schedule this to go out at a future date instead of going out immediately. So I'm just going to create a, a reminder email here. Um, and let's say check your damp chaser. And I'm not going to bother writing out the email here, but you get the picture. And then instead of sending it immediately, I could choose, let's say, let's send it tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. And I hit save. All right, so now this first email is going to go out immediately uh, as soon as I save this completion. And then the second email is going to go out tomorrow at 5 p.m. So these are ways to send mess scheduled messages to go out to your customer that are not necessarily the typical scheduled reminders. It might be something a little bit more personal or for a specific purpose. And as I, I kind of glossed over here, but you can also send scheduled text messages to go out or schedule phone calls to come up in your call center um, so that you can be reminded to call them about a specific thing in the future. Okay, the next common action that you might want to do is create an invoice for the customer. So if you've not done this already, you can just click here to add an invoice. And I'm just gonna throw together a quick invoice here. Let's just say that it was a tuning. Okay, that all looks fine. And let's say that, um, that we replaced a, a broken string as well. Okay, so we've got an invoice for this customer. 
Um, so now this invoice will get created. I can click here to send an email to the customer as well. So let's send an email to Edgar and yes, let's attach a PDF to it as well. So this email now will contain a link to the online invoice. It'll also create a PDF that's attached to the invoice email as well. And so now when I click save, um, he's going to get uh, this email as well about the invoice. And let's say he didn't pay us. So um, we're not going to mark it as paid. And if you have our uh, Stripe payments integration enabled, uh, when he gets this email, there will be an option to pay online there as well. Another thing you might want to do is to add some notes so that you can remember about this customer in the future. Now we recommend um, usually taking some personal notes about the customer so that uh, the next time you drive up to their house, you can be reminded of these personal details and have a little bit more of a uh, personable uh, conversation with them when you walk in. So let's say, let's add a, a personal note here and say that they got a new dog and the dog's name is Fluffy. So I hit save, I hit okay on that. And so now when I save this, that note is gonna be on their client record. And the next time you have an appointment with this customer, you'll see that note on their client record and you can walk in and greet the dog by name. Now you can also add some service history notes down here as well. Um, so I could just add, um, you know, uh, any, any extra information that you want to uh, note about the service that you did on this piano today. Now, creating an invoice automatically creates service history. So these invoice items, the fact that I tuned a piano and I replaced a broken string, those two things will automatically already be created as service items or service history on their, on their timeline. But if there's any extra notes that I want to add, um, I can do that here. If any uh, details about the repair or anything like that, I could add those here. And then you can also take measurements. Um, so we can say that that was, so the humidity was 65, the temperature was 75 and hit okay. So now I'm gonna click save. And now we are saving this completion for Edgar. Now, the next thing we do is we prompt you of whether you want to schedule the next appointment. So um, many technicians often uh, pre-book appointments six months or a year out. And so if you do that as a common workflow for yourself, um, you can use this as a prompt to remind yourself if you're standing there in the house with the customer to uh, just go ahead and book the next appointment. So let's say we're on our phone and we are at the customer's house and the customer's standing right there. So now let's, let's, um, let's click yes on this to schedule the next appointment. So it pulls all that same information in, pulls in a tuning reminder, and then we can click down here to schedule it for six months from now. So now Gazelle is going to search our calendar six months from now for any kind of openings that we may have. Um, and now you can see here that uh, on February 28th, uh, that is the one that Gazelle thinks is gonna be the best. So let's offer that as an option and click save. And now Edgar is on our calendar and we've completed the appointment. So now at this point, you can move on from Edgar and not have to think any more about him until he schedules his next service appointment. And you can rest assured that Gazelle is going to remind him and not let him fall through the cracks. Now, that took a few minutes to walk through because I was explaining all of these steps as we were going through. But in reality, it, it's actually a very quick process. Um, in, in the very minimal case, the, the minimum thing that you need to do is you just need to mark the appointment as complete. So if you don't want to do any of these other common actions, you can just pull up the record, mark it as complete and click save and be done. And that's that, that then starts scheduling those reminders to go out at the, uh, in six months or a year, depending on your service schedule. So as I mentioned, it is important to complete each appointment as soon as possible, or at least by the end of the day. This way your reminders will continue flowing and customers will feel well cared for. If your current process doesn't have a central place for managing common actions after an appointment, you risk forgetting this important step and having critical information or clients fall through the cracks. This can cause a loss of trust or even losing good customers due to insufficient follow-up. You'll go from a haphazard, chaotic mess of papers and scribbled notes to keeping orderly records about each appointment, scheduling timely and personal reminders so that you can focus on the next customer.